What's up, Jammies? Hope everyone had an awesome Thanksgiving. You know what it is. It's Ricky's Ram Jam presented by Barefoot Wine. Um, the final score from Arrowhead, 26 to 10. But I was impressed with how this team fought. Bryce Perkins with his first NFL start, his first touchdown. He was moving the chains with his legs. Van stepped up as the number one receiver in Allen Robinson's absence, who will have season-ending foot surgery. The defense and special teams played really great against one of the best offenses in the league. So a lot of things to, to come away from this. The Seahawks come to SoFi this weekend, and it's week 13, which means it's my cause, my cleats week in the NFL. And I love seeing everyone's creativity and their passion for their charities. Mina Kimes is going to join me in a bit to talk a little preview. Um, but I want to hit the fan question of the week first. So a reminder to send your questions to Ricky's Ram Jam at rams.nfl.com. And this is from Mike. S and he says, if you could create a my cause, my cleats, what would you do? And I was walking my dog Thor this morning and I was really thinking about that because I feel like there's so many cool organizations that I would want to highlight that I wonder, and, and I, I don't think that this is even allowed by the books, but I would love to do like a collage of cleats like where there's so many different things to be awareness to, to bring awareness to. And I think you would have to pick one. And I was also, you know, like, do I want to go the animal route? Do I want to go towards, you know, bringing awareness to the Trevor Project and the LGBT community, which would be something I'm very passionate about. But I don't know, something about children and children's cancer, which is something that I think some of our players are highlighting as well. So I just love, um, this is a runaround way for saying if I could wear cleats, I would have to put a ton of time into it because I just, number one, think the creativity of how they design them is so cool, but also it just like brings so many cool projects and people's side passions and, and you know, causes that they're really interested in to light. So I, I just love that. And keep an eye out on Twitter and Instagram and I'm sure players all around the league will be posting it, but I know that the Rams have some special stuff in order too, so I'm super excited for that. Okay, as you know, Jammies, we love football and we love our sponsor, Barefoot Wine. You know wine and football aren't that different. Sure, they can be complex, but enjoying them should be easy, and both are easier to enjoy with friends. So I'm happy to be pairing my Barefoot Wine with my wonderful friend and guest today, Mina Kimes. How's that for an intro? Have you ever gotten the wine intro before? No. <laughs> so there's a first for everything. It's good to see. Actually, the first time um, we met was when I went on your old podcast and you brought a bottle of wine to my house and we had never I met. I did. Yeah. I know. What, I think wi- wine is like what, you know, just like bi- binds people together. It was a bold choice. Like you could have been like, hey, I don't drink or, or whatever. And you're you're gracious enough to, to let Emma and I enter your house. And, and I thought... I thought wine was appropriate, so I think it worked. We're still friends years later. Yeah, you also got, you guys wrote a song for me, I think. Kimes after, after Kimes. After Kimes, yeah. Ugh, Hopefully that's get a, that, that, yeah. Oh my God, it's it's such a banger. Mina, I'm so happy to be sitting down with you today. You're the busiest person on planet Earth, and so I just, number one, appreciate you making the time. Number two, like what, how do you manage everything that that you do like do you have an assistant do you have an excel spreadsheet where you know where you are at what time like what is your game day setup tell me tell me everything because I just I want to be just like you so I'm gonna write it all down (laughs) I was gonna say are you volunteering to assist because I could use that um no I I I, I'm not that busy I don't know I mean I guess I'm busy but everybody's busy during the football season um and um certain days obviously are more busy than others you know I I, so I uh, three days a week, I'm on a show called NFL Live, and a lot of the prep I do is oriented towards that, just in terms of watching the games, which games I'm going to rewatch, what kind of study I'm going to do, what kind of preparation. Um, but, you know, I'm also on other shows at ESPN where we talk about things other than football. So, I, you know, <laughs> and around the horn, we talk about the World Cup and basketball. So uh, I mix in a diet of other sports, but this time of year, it's primarily football. Yeah, I just like I can just imagine like I get home and I sometimes like just don't want to watch like after after, you know, every night of the week football and then I'm just tired and I have my dog. I have my relationship that I'm trying to manage. And like sometimes I just need to be like, hey, I'm not really doing that much. So I don't even understand like how you function. And I am in constant, constant awe. (laughs) You know, I will say uh, come November, December, it can be a little hard to gin up enthusiasm for Steelers Colts on a Monday night. But right. um, 
I always try to find so I do, I do I do a Tuesday show episode of the Meaning Time show and we talk about Monday Night Football and I just try to figure out like well what is interesting about this game you know what I really want to take a hard look at Kenny Pickett who we got to watch you know last night and I want to talk about the Buck the Colts next year and what their options are so it's just I, I find it's all about um, figuring out what is interesting and there always is something interesting in every game of course. Yeah, definitely. So so let's, you know, we were just talking about it off air and it's funny. I was literally like, you are the perfect person to <laughs> to talk uh, Rams right now because you are, you know, grinding tape for the Rams, but also the preseason, you know, queen, right? Queen in the booth. So you know a lot of these guys that are getting started. So I just kind of want to dive in. We don't really know what's if Stafford will be playing. I'm going to assume yeah. that he's probably not. Allen Robinson is on IR. So like Bryce Perkins... Uh, you know, kind of held his own against a really great Chiefs defense as well last week. So, you know, uh, it hasn't been all, you know, first team defenses when he's been practicing, um, and especially in the preseason. But like, what what did you see from him that you think that could translate to success on, on Sundays? Yeah, if he plays, because John Wolfer is also in the mix. Another, right, coming back know, from his neck. Right. A name that Rams preseason viewers are very familiar with, that I'm very familiar with, and I'm a fan of. Um, so there'll be decisions there as well. Um, but, you know, as, as far as Bryce goes, you know, that, it's a tall order, man, to start against the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, and right. um, I, I think you saw, obviously, some ups and downs, but you saw some of what I think the Rams liked about him in this preseason, the previous one, which is just his competitive spirit uh the fire he, he's a bit of a gamer you know and um yeah. whether it's extending plays with his legs making a pr- pretty clutch fourth down throw and this one i thought um jumps to mind um and then and then growth because that's really you there's no expectation that he's going to come here come into this offense and replicate what matt stafford does and obviously they change what they do on offense with him but being a young inexperienced quarterback you just want to see okay is he looking a little bit more comfortable in the pocket a little more willing to go through his progressions, a little bit more accurate on certain types of throws. And I think that's something that you're going to continue to see from him, whether it's this week or over the course of his career. Yeah. Also, it's great that he can use his legs the way that he does too, especially with the, yeah, the, the offensive line that the Rams are are dealing with currently um, with all their injuries and everything. I think someone that is a mobile quarterback, which John Wolford can, can do that too. too. Yeah. Um, Which is really, yeah, it's, which is exciting to see. And so I just, you know, I think looking towards the the future of this team, and like you just said, there are there are some positives to be taken away. I know some Rams fans are kind of down and they're upset and everything, but I think with the with the litany of injuries that this team has gone through, even someone like Kyron Williams, who was injured during the yeah. preseason and then injured on his on the first drive of the season, but then he comes back and now he's like trending towards that RB one role, and you know he took seventy percent of the snaps versus Kansas City and Cam has been looking a little bit better these past few weeks, which has been promising to see too. But I I do feel like, you know, he was very, very explosive in the Notre Dame offense. I I do feel like, you know, what have you seen from him? And do you, you, are you as excited about him as I am? Because I seem to be really, really in on Kyron Williams. Yeah, I'm excited. You know, I I think the Rams drafted him because for a number of reasons, his versatility as a pass catcher, but also, um, who is they felt, and I think a lot of people around the league felt that he was probably the best pass protecting back right. in the draft, and um, you know that's a, a a quality with for young running backs that is not always that common. So I think <laughs> right. uh, that gives him an opportunity to get on the field and contribute more than say m- m- a more developmental prospect might. Um, but really, it's just that that juice, you know, that um, sort of burst of energy. Um, I really, uh, looking at his college, re- remembering watching him in college, I really liked his explosiveness. I thought he had good, he ran with good vision. Um, and, you know, it, it's it's not the easiest um, at the moment. You, you alluded to the injuries on the offensive line. Another, by the way, if you want to watch, uh, watching the Rams preseason, you're seeing a lot of names that you're familiar with there. Right. Um, so you have to also consider that context when you watch him because, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not wide open holes the way it has been at times and you got to kind of consider the level of difficulty too I think also too is is the energy with him too just like his mic'd up came out this week and just him before the games he is just such a breath of fresh air 
that during right now when you're on this sort of losing streak and the injuries and people are just they're just fighting to just try to make plays out on the field like he's just running out of the tunnel screaming and like if you get a chance (laughs) to watch his mic'd up like he is so positive and so excited and just like to me that's someone that I just want to buy in on anyway so Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just really into him right now which is awesome but We've got some young wide receivers on the Rams as well. Tutu Atwell, who has been getting a little bit more play. You know, Lance McCutcheon, we saw him, who he did. He had some great chemistry with Bryce Perkins in the preseason as well. Obviously, he has that sprained AC joint. But, you know, what does this extending playing time do for the development of these two young receivers? Oh, it's it's enormous. Um, you know, I, know, I don't want to... Um dismiss the preseason because it's right. important to me right. personally <laughs> but uh you know playing against nfl cornerbacks is uh, probably starting cornerbacks is a very different experience and it's um it gives the coaches a real chance to evaluate some of these younger players as well as obviously giving them the sort of valuable reps that they wouldn't otherwise get um, and and it's important by the way because even when the rams do get healthier um I would say I don't think this is out of pocket because the way the team is built, which is, you know, fairly top heavy, uh, you do need and and obviously the approach to the draft picks. Maybe that's a better way of putting it. You do need these young some of these younger players to to hit. So I think this time having some of them, especially I would say a lot of the young DBs as well, um, get those sorts of opportunities to grow and and contribute next year is really, really important because you're going to need them to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you are a um, a Seattle fan. I know you're a fan of of all the teams, and I know that uh, you're from Seattle. Is that is that right? Or um, how so did I'm you become a Seattle not, fan? I, I'm from all over. My dad was in the military, but he's from right. Seattle. So my whole family okay. is just all Seattle sports. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So have you spent a lot of time in Seattle? I or have. You just yeah. love the sports. Okay. Because no, I was going to say, been. like, <laughs> what's more iconic, like, in Seattle, the needle or Grey's Anatomy? But if that's, like, not a fitting question for this, then that we can scratch it. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I mean, if you watch football, you would think that the only thing Seattle has is the Pike Place Market and Nirvana right. because they're, like, contractually obvious. Or Spoon Man. They play Spoon Man a lot during yep. Seattle football games. Yep. A lot of Spoon Man. There's a lot yeah. of, you know, they, they really got to mix it up. There's a lot of really good Seattle bands, I feel like. Yeah, definitely. Um, beyond, there's more songs than Spoon Man. Yeah, no, I agree. I it's think when I think of Seattle, I think of you throwing out the pitch, and then I think of Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> so I think if that, those are the two most iconic <laughs> things coming out of Seattle, like not Pearl Jam, not these bands, but um, yeah, Grey's Anatomy, I, I think, and Mina Kimes. So that's yeah, great. Is right? Grey's Anatomy still on? Oh, yeah, it is crazy so what do you think will end first Grey's Anatomy or Tom Brady's career (laughs) they're on season I think 24 maybe 20 probably the same length right a pretty approximately right yeah yeah Yeah. um well are are there parallels like is Grey's Anatomy struggling the same way this season (laughs) I don't think so I don't don't, think they just (laughs) the quality dipped off you know, yeah, I you know out when <laughs> the main dude died. Spoiler alert. Yeah. If you're it yeah, was like spoiler. 12, 10 <laughs> yeah. or something. You're, yeah. you're going back. Yeah, you guys, I'm so sorry, Jamies. We just we just revealed a huge plot um, thing. But yeah, there's been a ton of deaths. ton of people come back. A lot of deaths. Second spoiler alert. Like, they come back. It's crazy. Who comes back? Um, I I think uh, McDreamy comes back in like dream sequences oh, and all that's, these type of stuff. That yeah. Shit. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, no, it's amazing. It's amazing. No, the, I love the, that. Also, there was a season where Catherine Hagel's character started seeing like a ghost or something, and I was yep, like, yep. I can't. This Denny. is not. Yeah, can't yeah. Do this. No, it's, do it. it is. It is Failed. maybe the be- best produced television of all time. Okay, so Seattle. We have a piece <laughs> now from Seattle, Bobby Wagner. So Bobby yeah. Wagner, great guy, joined this you know Super Bowl caliber team I don't know if you had a chance to read the piece that Jordan Rodriguez did on him he is just just in general just the type of of guy that he is and leader and captain for this team you know do you think this game is circled for him on the calendar and also like how important is his leadership to this team right now like how important is it going forward in a stretch like this I'm sure it matters a little bit you know especially given the um circumstances of his departure you know um which he's talked about 
but you know, Bo- Bobby's like the perfectly. I mean, the way his teammates in Seattle talked about him, and now in Los Angeles, um, it's it. He, there's so much respect for him. I, there's still so much respect for him in Seattle, of course, that I don't think as far as like on the field, you know, there, there's, I, I don't think there's any bad blood there. Um, just tons of mutual respect and admiration. I mean, like the guy honestly should run for office or something. Yeah. He's just so um, obviously smart and, and um, an incredible leader, but just a really, really good guy. Like, uh, you know, such a pillar in the community and right. Um, what he does off the field is so impressive. You talk about, you know, Jordan Rigg's story and it's something that he's done throughout his NFL career, frankly, is, you know, I, I consider it like a privilege to have watched him from the very beginning when he was drafted second round, I think at a Utah state. Yeah. Um, and watch just how, just watch his game grow. Um, and yeah, I think in a situation now, like in Los Angeles, where there's a lot of young players and a lot of injuries and it's, you know, the goings are not the easiest, having a player like that in the locker room is so important. So I'm sure they're really glad to have him in there. Yeah, definitely. Just watching his, you know, after pressers, um, after the games and everything and just how he's been saying, like, we still have to fight. And I think it's really important for some of the younger guys on the squad, too. You know, you've been getting a lot of Kobe Durant and DK has been getting more snaps lately. And and I think that it's been important to have that type of, of leadership for sure, which is which is I'm excited for this game. I think. I don't think it's necessarily the game that I would have expected it to be when we first looked at at the season, and I'm not expecting, you know, a, a Seattle uh, Broncos <laughs> matchup with that type of animosity, but I do think that, that he has this one circled, and I think that a lot of people are, you know, it's a younger team, they're riddled with injuries and everything, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if the defense brings a little bit more extra juice this coming Sunday. Like, I, th- I think it'll be fun to watch. I think the defense has played pretty well, and um, exactly, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I especially do think, in the red you know, zone. Obviously, yeah, for sure. I mean, and Nick Scott making that huge play um, was good to see. You know, speaking of a guy who started as a preseason All Star and then worked his way up to play in the playoffs, <laughs> and then has become a mainstay of that defense. But yeah, I think um, we'll see what AD's status is with the ankle. But certainly, you're seeing new and young whether it's like a Michael Hoy for example uh, you know like I used to see in the preseason or some of those young corners you alluded to you are seeing a lot of young players really develop this year yeah which is super important okay so now it's time for the Ram Jam and this is to close each show I ask the same three questions they're super creative so brace yourselves okay what is your favorite Rams moment of all time <laughs> um it was Aaron Donald appearing on Hawaii Five O. that was <laughs> amazing uh, he was in hawaii for the preseason for to do that i actually didn't see the final version but i heard he was really good really? Um, no, my, my real answer is um i remember the the kurt warner the great show the first that um super bowl season really really well because i think i was in junior high so maybe i don't remember that well but i was younger and i remember from the very i just remember it so vividly from the jump because i i, I really loved football back then and consume and i used to read Sports Illustrated, and um, I remember at the very beginning of the season reading a season preview, or early in the season, and they were like, Kurt Warner, Kurt who, right? I, I, I just really remember vividly reading this, and then watching what happened that season, which of course, you know, there's a movie about it now, it's like a right. magical underdog story. Uh, it just kind of made me th- believe that like anything is possible in football. Cause sometimes I think yeah. it feels like, you know, oh, this uh, we already know it was gonna be in the Super Bowl, we already know who the best teams are, and I, that season was like, no, you don't actually. <laughs> like, you could be totally shocked. And I remember it from there until the tack. I, I just remember it all so vividly. And it was a really formative right. experience for me in terms of like recognizing the unpredictability of the game. I love that. If you could eat only one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? <laughs> um, I have a weird answer. Okay. Uh, my favorite food is corn. Okay, so you're like, you're I big on the corn. corn kid. The corn kid. The corn is, kid kind of stole my thunder, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad for him. I'm glad he's getting from deals and such. But I've always loved corn. I love okay, corn on okay. the cob. I love cream corn. I love elote. Love like a little, like, um, like a, I love cornbread. Corn I love corn pudding. Mm. I, I love it all. And All right. You know, I'm just hey, you got to take corn, corn back. You got to take it back. Mm. Screw that guy with my jokes. 
Um, so corn, just in, in all its uh, its capacity, I guess. Okay, it's a vegetable. Corn, so. So, yes. Okay, okay. What would you do if fear was not a factor and you could not fail? Um, yeah, it's a good question. I got it off Google, like at the beginning of the season, and I just stuck with it. <laughs> um, I like to think that I would cut my hair short because it looks really yeah. comfortable, but I feel like I would look like really how bad. short, like buzz or not like no, no. That's a bad answer. Let me give a different answer, actually. Okay. Because you can't fail. So if you, yeah, if that you was all a of a sudden rock answer. a buzz cut, like you're you're literally the best looking short haired girl on the planet. You cannot fail. Oh. In I this can't scenario. Fail. Okay. That, right. I shot way too low with that answer. Yeah, for sure. Cut. That was a terrible answer. <laughs> like end um, world hunger? Yeah. No, I'd shave my head. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, if, well, okay. Well, if here's not a factor and I cannot fail, then... Right. I I would run for president. Okay, I would vote. No, for I you, wouldn't. So I Why did I say good. that? I just that was you wouldn't. Looking you just lied. Answer. I don't want to be president. It seems like a horrible job. Yeah, that seems that's maybe like commissioner of the NFL. Hmm, I've read that'd that be kind of always cool. mad at you. No. Yeah, that's true. You get booed a lot. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah, I I, I I I'm gonna go back to the original answer. I would get a new haircut because I've had the same haircut my whole life. <laughs> Literally my whole life since, or at least since middle school, it's been the same. Okay, I do my hair the okay. same way every day. I don't know if you know. Yeah, that. but like, yeah, what, it, what is there? Are there ESPN people being like, Mina, you got to keep it long, or are you just like, no, this just this is what works? <laughs> how how weird would that be? <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> there were people telling me how I do my hair. No, because the, 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 the ladies do my hair, they're always like, let's try something different. How about like a updo? And I'm like, or no. like a bob. No, no it could you, go horribly you know. wrong. It could. It could. I, I just keep it, it could. Same. All right. So my easy to enjoy question of the week. We're staying on the on our wine theme here. Okay. So you kind of already touched on it with your tweet about who is someone you met on here, and it went viral, and it was like really earnest and sweet, and I <laughs> loved reading a bunch of the replies. But let's just say Twitter's obsolete. It's going to self destruct at midnight. Like, what is your go to move, or what is your last tweet? Like, is it here? Follow me on Instagram and TikTok, or like buy my my etch a sketch paintings or are you just tweeting like the most erroneous crazy stuff ever Ooh, uh like a final take yeah like your final tweet not just like what's one take you want to tweet before twitter's done it's like this is the last this is the last thing that's ever going to be when you type in mina kimes and you go up to the top of the twitter like it's there it's like, um you know, i thought i did this actually what, first because i did a tweet that was like <laughs> Oh, Twitter's down. You can find me here. And I posted a link and it was a link to Geno Smith's highlights. Um, but then I, I blew it because Twitter stayed alive. I know. I was, um, yes. That's pretty happy. Oh, that's pretty, happy that that's pretty good. Yeah. That's so, pretty good. So, um, yeah, I would probably just send people to my podcast as sad okay. as that is. Yeah. No, I love that. I or love I would get off sure my you... most toxic take. And? My most toxic take. Are you all restaurants are good? I agree. Instead of cook, that's not even toxic. That's an amazing take. People get so mad when you say why. Because why you don't have to cook. Restaurants are not. You don't have to do the dishes. You don't. You don't have to do anything. I could. Thank you. You could eat Panda Express at an airport where it's seventeen dollars. Oh my god, it's amazing. Oh, and it man. tastes better and it's yeah that's wow. that's that's honestly that's the best take mina thank you so much i i know that you're probably going to be a little divided on sunday with um your rooting interest but i know you're the you're the most professional person so you'll <laughs> you'll be right down the line but i'm gonna say uh let's you know let's get a rams upset this weekend that'll be fun we'll see about that all right, there she goes, Mina, one of the best and smartest women I know. She is just incredible, and I'm just, we're so lucky to have her in the football world. And I think she could run for president because I would totally vote for her or commissioner. Or if she wants to cut her hair, Mina, the jammies have your back. We got you. All right, you guys, week 13, here we go. I'll see you at SoFi on Sunday. Let's bring on the Seahawks and let's ram it. Mm-hmm.